Hey, good morning, and how are you guys doing today? I hope amazing. So today we're going to be finishing up the rough draft of our sci-fi book. Um, super excited to get that done. I'm going to get chat up real fast so that I can, uh, well, so I can see what all of you are saying. We don't have a lot to get done in the book. I think the last chapter we're currently on, so that should go well. Hold on one second, I'll have chat up and we'll start right. I hope you guys had a great night. Hope you guys are ready for an amazing weekend. I'm super excited for the weekend myself. And so let's get the volume on that turned down. Okay, so we're ready. Let's look at where we're at. We're at 26 or 27. I think we're at chapter 27, honestly. So we have what we need to finish out to get Sam and the Vikings or the Vix back on their ship. Act 2 is its own entire book and Act 3 will be its own entire book. Um, and then we'll discuss revisions. And so today should be a pretty simple day. I'm trying to decide if we have them kill anything um, on their way out because they've already made it out of the temple and stuff like that. And so more or less, I kind of think that this chapter would be more of a, hey, there's some dialogue, there's some other crap, and um, they get off the planet. That That's where we're going to end book one. Now, book two, obviously, is going to be a whole bunch of Sam traveling and developing his powers while adventuring with the space Vikings. And book three is going to culminate the whole thing in a different way. I mean, let's just be honest. Book three is probably going to combine his old friends, the new friends, some epic war that we haven't got into yet. Okay. So, the Vicks seemed to know exactly where they were going, moving with certainty through the forest. Finally, which we would have had a comma there, we found ourselves near the lake's edge. I think that's a possessive lake's edge. Where the altar... Okay... Where the altar was, where I killed it. I think there's a comma there, I'm going to be honest, but we'll leave it for now. I'll, I'll look at that later. Where I killed the chimeric aberration, abomination, I'm sorry. I don't know why I called it an aberration. Real. Let's, let's go like this. Its body now lay. Take that be. Its body now laid on the altar, surrounded in what appeared to be offerings. Okay, I feel that that's that's good, and we'll probably leave that like that. Yeah, and let's move on.
Okay. Pretty sure we gave him a plasma pistol, but if I'm wrong, um, I'll fix that. Let me make this make sense now. Okay, got that part. I don't know why that separated like that, so let's fix that. Obviously, we're going to have another paragraph here. I feel at this point... I do kind of want to shoot some of them. I mean, not not the the Vix. I want to shoot some of the zombies that we created, but I don't really feel that they would have caught up with us. So let's figure out what we're gonna do here. Okay. That looks wrong. Is that the wrong shore? Well, I'll check that later.
think he has a laser rifle, Bjorn. This 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 technicality on if it was a laser rifle or a pistol, I'll get fixed in in revision, just to be honest. But I think Bjorn actually has a laser rifle on him. But uh, who knows? But okay, so this is fictional violence, YouTube. It's not real, so you don't have to strike me. I put down three with my lit, my plasma pistol, and Bjorn killed the other two with the ri la with the laser rifle he had taken. Okay. Really, we don't have a lot to take care of in this chapter. I'm feeling that... Well, on revision, let's just be honest, we're going to have to expand out this chapter a little bit. I mean, I don't know exactly how, but uh, I feel that I don't like exact, I mean, it's not perfect for sure. Let's let's just go into that. Okay, so let's get this written.
Okay. Sorry. Come on. Yeah, this, this is where we're going to have justification for Sam getting took with them. Okay, I'm going to go like that. We're going to say that he said that excitedly. Hey, need a freak. Good morning. I hope you're having a great one. Prepared for the, the weekend. We're about to conclude this. Honestly, man. Uh, we're going to probably have to touch a few things. Um, I feel like we're, we're having a short day today because we're at the end of the book. Um, I'm going to be doing revisions at these times. Plus, I'm going to do revisions off the screen, too, and stuff. And so this is book one almost done. We're just flying off the planet.
Okay. I feel we'd all Okay, we've got full control. I'll read back through this. Once aboard the ship, we quickly move to the ship's bridge. Okay, once aboard, obviously, we don't need ship in there. Once aboard, we quickly move to the ship's bridge, where I began creating a link connection to the ship. Do we need the word link and connection? No. Let's get rid of that. Boom. At first, 
click. It was a near field connection, but the nanites began creating a direct connection by the time by the time I had patched into the system. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that's how, how we'll leave it, just to be honest. Allowing me to move through systems. Uh, let's go like this, patched into the ship. Okay, I have patched into the ship, allowing me to move through systems with ease, gaining full control. I think we only need full control right there. Hey, good morning, Fire Debug. We're just about to finish the rough draft on this. Okay. I don't really think we'd care about the weapon systems, but I don't really think that that's relevant. Let's just get rid of that right there. We can get into weapon systems and stuff like that in book two. We're ending this up in space. Okay, I quickly had the engines up and could feel the power of the, of the sh power of the ship. Okay, I quickly had the engines up and could peel the power of the ship as it lifted off. That makes much more sense. Hey, you're not late, man. You guys are good. I don't. I appreciate you guys hanging out at all. I think you're all epic, so I'm not that worried about it. There's no late. Anyway, hey, good morning, Zuck. How you doing? Hope you're kicking butt. Anyway, we're gonna end up going over what I need to touch up, other ideas. Um, obviously it won't be a two hour stream though today, but starting this next week, we're in revisions in which honestly this weekend, I'll probably revise some of it. I don't know, but basically we're going to kick this. This thing's going to be done, done within another month or two is the goal. Actually, I'd like to have it fully revised in a couple weeks and have it done, finished in less than two months, just to be honest, you guys. So we could have it up and published in two months. That's the goal. Next 60 days, get this baby published. Not a big deal, but we should be able to do it. Okay, I quickly had the engines up and could feel the power of the ship as it lifted off.
I'm I still play EU. I play EU all the time. Yeah, I absolutely play EU, EU in the afternoons. I just played yesterday. I love EU. Super fun game. I wish I owned my own planet, though, you guys. I'm going to just be honest. I want a war-torn, like, steampunk genre planet. Just to be frank with you. That's just a little bit out of my price range to be buying in a, a fully new steampunk planet. But I want airships and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That'll be a later plan, guys. I've got to, I've got to make a considerable amount of money to be buying in my own planet, which wouldn't be my own planet. It'd be the the system's planet. But you know, yeah, super fun idea. I feel a planet to just to be honest guys and this is just my feeling on it would cost about three million to do right because you got to have a development team you've got to have all the stuff to maintain all your stuff and you have to buy in all kinds of crap you know what I'm saying plus you're gonna have to grease some wheels to get things done in the, the entropy universe you know that they have to approve everything for planetary partners and stuff, right? So that means you're probably going to want to want a little bit of walk around money to be able to grease those wheels. You guys can take that how you want. I'm just saying that I feel as a planetary partner, if I had about a little bit of money extra to be like, hey, I'd really like this, I think that it would happen. I think that the just trying to work through the normal system is, is super frustrating for a lot of the planetary partners. And so, but yeah, I feel about three million, maybe four, but three million is what I thought that it was realistic to do for. I mean, you'd have to talk to Entropia itself to find out, but uh, no, RT's not worth three million. Absolutely no, because it's 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 not it's not. But the three million isn't just for the planet, guys. You have to have a staff, and so like real good staff members. That's actually what kills some of these planets. They don't have a full time staff that's just sitting there working the stuff. Like if you got three million, you've got the planetary purchase. You've got buy-in of all the stuff plus greasing wheels to get the stuff approved, right? And then you need to have a full-time actual development staff working on improving and upgrading the planet. Like, so the three million is, is it's realistic. It's not that the planet themselves are worth that much as just sitting there. But a planet in evolution with cutting edge, hey, this is constantly being developed. Hey, this is constantly being added to. This is constantly being um, upgraded in functional ways to make it a better player experience. That's where you end up with some of those costs. That's also where you end up with more of the players on your planet because it's constantly being worked instead of letting issues that have been an issue for the last how many years just sat there I agree if it is business and uh, I agree no one likes bugs and there's a lot of great ideas that nobody integrates into their planets because they're just sitting there. I don't know why. Let me get this last chapter finished out and then then we'll we'll 
go over revisions. We'll BS about stuff. We'll figure out the day. I'm going to go hiking. I'm going to go hike uh, uh, Mount Garfield today, later. Which, honestly, every time I've ever hiked Mount Garfield, it's just a reminder that I need to stay in shape. That's I'm going to let you know. It's like the biggest wake-up call. Every year I go hike it, and every year, holy crap. Oh, man. It, it puts me in check. It's a great, hey, you thought you were semi in shape, which I don't even think I'm semi in shape right now. So it'll be a, it'll be a slap today, I'm going to just tell you. Yeah, I got invited to go hiking with a bunch of people. It'll be good. Some of them are younger, fit, in shape people, though. Those happen to be all girls. So let's just hope it's not embarrassing. They're not all girls. It's two of my buddies and some girls. And we're going to go hiking. Don't ask me. It was last night decided. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go hike with you. They all look to be in shape, though. Whew, deep breath on that. Okay, the turbulence and turbulence ended and we reached space. Well, I still gotta figure out what the crap we'd be doing here. Oh, yeah, no, it will. It's going to go good. A hike, a day hiking is a good day still. It just, Mount Garfield has an extreme um, elevation gain over distance. So it's not even a long hike, right? This is the thing. Mount Garfield is just freaking like this. Like the whole way. Well, not really. So it's like this a lot. Then you get up. You go around some corner and you're in some valley where sometimes there's wild horses. And then you walk across this valley, which normally has wild horses, you know, during the summer. I don't know if it will during the winter. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're like that again. And so at two different points, you're hiking just straight freaking up. And then after you're done... You have to walk down. And you know how like when you're like walking down, it's super jarring. So basically it just pounds you the whole way. Like it, I'm, I'll be sore tomorrow. I'm not even going to pretend. Let's get this out like that. I don't feel that needs to be there. Okay. So this is where I think we're going to leave it like this. I don't know why that's wrong. Oh, 
Oh, okay, that makes sense. What is it? Is it a fleet? Hmm. Let's think what he would say, guys. He gave me the coordinates of a system I had not recognized, saying... Okay, that's where we're going to leave it. So. So he's going to, in book two, guys, for real, she's going to become a space viking. So we know that chapter one. Is that we already have him not addicted? So the bearded traveler is going to be its own thing. I feel that that will that let's have let's put chapter, 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 chapter. Okay, so chapter four is probably going to be meets the bearded traveler. This, this other stuff will will have. It's going to be multiple chapters too. The kill the dragon is going to be. Oh yeah, the man in robes. We're going to have after him. I don't know how that's going to end up. Honestly, I'm kind of confused on how the man in robes would get off the planet to do anything. Let's just leave the man in robes as a permanent enemy out there, and let's like not say that that's even going to have anything to do with chapter, I mean, book two, because that's probably not actually going to happen. Let me grab our things so we can go over what we have to fix, because we're at 154 pages. I'm going to add two whole new chapters, if not three, in revision, okay? And we have still the whole sex scene going on where he um, remember how they messed around inside of the uh, sick bay and I told you guys we're not writing that because I'm on uh, YouTube and YouTube would get mad if we're writing that scene on there probably in my opinion so we've got a lot of corrections a lot of other stuff let me grab my pencil, see what we're having done. 
So we've got two new chapters. I need to establish some empathy. We're adding. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of notes here. We need to back add some more powers. It looks like I'm going to back add more magic and a little bit more action. Um, we need to back add more about the AI and Amelia, including um, more information on the ship. We're going to back add more details about the weapon systems and fix the details that I feel are wrong about the weapon systems. Um, Kiara explains more. About something I don't even know as they do bliss oh so that section where they did bliss together and hung out she's actually going to break down more a whole chapter where he goes into the AI learning a bunch of stuff which then whatever he learns in the AI will echo through to the rest of the book a little bit changing it uh, we already made sure Sam is aware of the nanites. Oh. We have to establish that Kiara cannot read Amelia at all. So. Oh, we need to do more on Brandon's character. So we're going to develop Brandon's character. Brandon's going to end up coming into book two, you guys, by the way. Oh, and we're separating out the AI and the infection. I don't know. I have flying, but I have no idea what that's in reference to. So sometimes when you make a note, it's probably a good idea to make a better note than a single word. The ship now is going to have a full crew and a, a character captain with more detail. So that means that we're going to have a bigger fight in the fight scene, obviously, too. And we're going to add... A another magic user. Who takes Sam's side? Okay, so the other magic user is going to take Sam's side after Zack dies. So that, that should change a whole bunch of stuff. Um, obviously, also, we have to fix all these blue sections in which they're blue for a reason. We didn't like how they go. We think that they need expanded in some cases and stuff like that. Uh, see... Give some type of expanding detail. Some of the blue sections are expanding detail sections. And so I'm not exactly sure how much bigger this will be. I would say that we'll probably be closing in on 200 pages. Maybe on this book one. By the time we're fully through revisions. Um, revision three, I'm not sure if we'll do online or not kind of mixed bag on that but we've got book one done as as we set guys is that not crazy fully done with book one rough draft now all we got to do is fix book one the rough draft so book two we all know where book two starts right Arrival at the Viking place. 
Or we could have him, we could pick it up right at the Viking Trials. Who knows? I'll figure that out later. Okay, so that is, weirdly enough, going to be it for this morning. We're, we're, we're already done, and we're, we're going to be doing revisions next week. So remember, Wednesday next week, we're doing revisions. Friday, we're doing revisions. Between that, I'm actually going to do some revisions also. Um, the goal is to publish this within the next 60 days or less. It'd be nice if it was less than 60 days. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know that's going to happen. I am looking at writing software to help flush out the details and stuff like that that we can use to, to improve what overall has been done. We'll look at that. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try to see if any of these guys are on so we can raid them. I'd like to raid some people back. So we have Vand, Drags, and Prime. Okay. Let's see if anybody's up. Okay. Do you guys pick anybody? Anybody? You guys are welcome to pick somebody. Prime, right there. Prime's on. Does this look like they're doing stuff? I think so, guys. Do you guys think that they're doing stuff? Because I want to raid them back. But I can't tell what they're doing here. Looks like they were looking at JR Token. And getting ready to stream. I'm gonna I'm gonna raid over to them. I'm crossing my fingers that they're actually getting ready to stream. Okay, thank you guys so much for hanging out. And um, super excited for this next week. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing weekend. And peace and very best wishes.